about how to fall in love with yourself um so we we often talk about self-love um that's especially something that the show stands for self-love is the best love that's like a huge part of a positivity spread the only way to truly be positive is to have that love within because positivity and love are one and the same you know so when you have positivity in your heart you have love in your heart because you see the good things in life and that's all love is is seeing the good things feeling good giving that that good feeling away so on and so forth it spreads like wildfire so we just got to spread love at the same time um so understand that there are certain questions to ask you know to figure out if you need to maybe rekindle that spark within yourself. Um, for instance, like, you know, do you struggle with things like having self-worth? Um, do you feel like sometimes you just aren't good enough? Um, you know, have you ever wondered what life would be like if you learn to love yourself if you don't already? You know, things like that. So we really have to take that into consideration and ask those core questions to figure out, okay, do you truly love yourself? Like a lot of people say that they love themselves, but when you answer those questions and the answers that you come up with, that should definitely tell you if that statement is true or not. You know what I mean? Because of what you're going to get, the results that you're going to get. You know what I mean? So understand that self-love is basically us trying to establish a connection, you know, because as, as humans, the fundamentals of what we need starts with love. You know, that's one of the fundamental values in life that we cannot skip. Um, one that we truly need, and we just want to feel a bond, a connection, you know. So having adoration for others is great, but, you know, we can't always give that to outside sources. It has to go within. Pour all of that, that love and that adoration, that care, that nurturing that you have for others and give that right back to yourself. Um, You know, pour that into yourself, if anything, you know. So understand when will we stop trying to justify, you know, looking for outside sources as a way to validate ourselves? You know, when is that going to come to a halt? A lot of us do it. A lot of us are guilty of doing it. It's not necessarily that it's a terrible thing to do because social media is based off of validation. You know what I mean? That's how it was built. It's, it's all about validating each other and nothing's wrong with validating each other at all. You know, that's how we show love. We appreciate each other. We say, hey, I see what you're doing. I love the, the movement, whatever the case may be, or nice outfit. You look nice today or nice speech, whatever. I don't know. Whatever you're trying to do, your brand, something. You're, you are a brand in itself. But at the same time, understand that the world is run through validation. So that's why it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just too much validation is where you can get caught up. You know, seeking it too much, craving it too much. Um trying to get that that strong release of dopamine i believe it is um is something that you know has to be balanced out you can't just always look to other people to build you you know nor should you want to um if anything you should be the main one building you but i mean it's nice to have support you know we, we deserve that we need support because like i always say we have to coexist that's something we cannot avoid you know, and coexisting is a great thing. We need each other. And the minute, the minute we understand that, the, the more we grow, the more we adapt better and we, we advance more, you know. So give yourself, uh, give yourself that extra step up from others and, and stop seeking so much validation from the world and learn to find that within. Learn to fuel that from within. So ask yourself, you know, when is that going to stop? You know, when are you going to like try to understand what you're really doing to yourself? Um, and when will you learn to put those insecurities, you know, to an end? Because that's all it is. It's just a strong form of insecurity when you don't love yourself. And it's not your fault. It's because you go through different experiences. You know, maybe you talk to different people and you have a series of unfortunate events that happen. You know, it's, it's just something that we can't necessarily escape because it's a part of the growth process. You know, not saying that you have to be in pain all the time, but it, it does give you an upper hand. I'm not going to lie. The more you go through, the more you learn. You know, the more you go through, the more you advance in life. And the more you, you become strong, 
strong will, strong in who you are, strong in what you want, strong in what you deserve. You learn what you want and what you don't want, what you like and what you don't like. And all of that is a system of self-love. Learning what you'll tolerate versus what you won't tolerate. And it should be the same thing from yourself. You know how you build boundaries with other people? Hopefully you do that. You know what I mean? We're all working on that, work in progress with that. It should be the same way for you. If you don't allow other people to talk to you in a bad way, why do you talk to yourself in a bad way? You know, and if you do allow people to talk to you in a bad way, then we have to check that. You know what I mean? We have to do something about that. And that's where the, the first step starts, realizing how are you allowing others to treat you and how are you treating yourself most of all? Because how others see you treating you is how they're just going to treat you, you know? So if they see you loving yourself, not saying, I don't want to say that necessarily because that's not a guarantee. I don't want to guarantee that. Just because people see you loving yourself doesn't mean that they're going to reciprocate that love. No. But I feel like they'll respect you for sure because they understand what they can and cannot do. I'm getting blown now. Um, so it's more than possible to have all of that love and desire, you know, that, that we have for the world. We can put that towards ourselves. You know, we can help ourselves to be better through self-reflection and to learn how to be compassionate. You know, look in the mirror and be kind to that person that you see. Learn to love who that person is. You know, get a real clear understanding of that self-image. You know, who is that person? What is that person going through? What has that person been through? Learn to, to the core of who you are. Go in depth with yourself. You owe that to yourself. You have nothing but time to do that, especially in the, the climate. We have nothing but time to learn about ourselves. There's no excuse, especially now, because things are not as, as, as active as they, as they used to be, you know, which I think God does on purpose for us to really understand what, what we should value in life. Not saying that God is trying to, you know, do bad things, but I feel like when things are not seen in the way that they should, we learn lessons in, in the strangest ways, you know? So I feel like this is a time for us all to get closer to ourselves. And like I said, to be comfortable with that image, to build your own image, cultivate your own image, um, cultivate your own way of being and be comfortable with that. Stop looking to societal values and standards to tell you, to dictate to you, you know, who you should be, what you should look like, what you should sound like, dress like, feel like. Like, you know, it's good to do research, but that can be the end all be all for you all the time. That can't be your your result for everything is just learning from everybody around you and not learning from yourself. Like that's not doing justice to you. You know, that's not being fair to you because you're not giving yourself a fair chance, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being open-minded or, or, you know, taking influence from others and, and learning, of course, you know, if it does apply to that image that you're cultivating, then yeah, you know, put it together. But if it doesn't apply to you, you don't have to use it. You know, there's nothing set in stone. Everything is subject to change each and every day. Nothing is going to stay permanent. There's nothing permanent in life. Everything is temporary. That's just how life works. And that's not bad. It's just life, you know. And that means that you don't have to be the same person forever. Just because you fall in love or you fell in love with a certain version of yourself and you feel like you're not that person anymore, that doesn't mean you can't fall in love with an even better more amazing version of yourself you just have to cultivate that person you know what i mean and that's up to you you know but just understand that we're going to change and we just have to be comfortable with the changes you have the choices in, in how you change you know um to a certain extent of course because life is going to do what it does it does wonders and it works in our favor so go with the plan of life but for the most part, you can keep falling in love with new versions of you. You don't have to be the same version every single day. You don't have to. There's so many layers to a person. You know, we are very simple but complex beings at the same time. Because we're never fully going to know every part of ourselves, but we can get pretty damn close in my book. I think we can get pretty close. And, and even when we get close, like I said, if it changes, okay, don't freak out. Don't, don't feel like it's the end of the world because you're not who you used to be. You know, I, I was tied to an old image of myself, you know, looking back. But I'm like, that was, that was, that's a part of the evolution. Like, you can't hold on to that. Things happen to people. People change based on circumstances. 
unfortunate most of the time. And that's not your fault, though. So that doesn't mean you stop loving yourself. That just means that you learn to love yourself in new ways. You know, that that means you learn to love yourself for, for more reasons than you used to, you know, and be more nurturing towards yourself. Be more gentle with yourself because you know what you've been through. You know, you've been through a lot. We all have. It's just we don't speak on it, but we're all going through all kinds of things each day. Everybody is dealing with a different situation. Sometimes it's really difficult. Sometimes it's a breeze. That's just what life is. It's ups and downs and in-betweens. It's a roller coaster of learning how to build self-love and self-care, you know, because those routines are always going to change. They're never going to stay the same. And that's just how life works, you know. But understand that love is influential in all parts of our lives. So why not utilize that, you know, to take care of ourselves? Everything in the world is based off of love in some way, I promise. You know, if you really sit and you look at it for what it is, that's why I said that validation. Validation is a form of love, you know? So, and that's how social media is. You see these likes? Why do you think we have hearts, like likes and follows and all? That's where it's showing love to people, saying, hey, I see you. I want to follow what you're doing. I want to, you know, be a part of that journey. That is showing love. It's not... It's not the direct way, maybe. It's not the traditional way of saying, hey, I love what you're doing or I love who you are. But it's a form of love, nonetheless. You know, just like live me. You come on here, you throw gifts. That's love, you know, in a way. You know, because you're you're giving to someone's cause, some kind of way. You're letting someone know, hey, I like what you just said. Let me throw you a gift. That's love. You know, it may not be you know, giving them money or feeding them or anything like that. But I mean, it's, it's love. You know, we, we got to stop looking at what society deems as love and, and, and not love. You know, build your own definition of that. Build your own definition of who you are. You know what I mean? Like, look at every little detail. Every little detail, I promise you, has some form of love in, invested in it somehow. That's how all these companies are able to work because they know as humans, like I said, the fundamentals of who we are. One of them is is the main source is love, you know what I mean, and they 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 use that to their advantage in so many ways to to make money off of us and things like that. But that's for another day, you know. But understand that they they understand how love works, and we all do. We just choose not to at times. Sometimes we want to be oblivious because we're going through a lot, and we just kind of want to put ourselves on the back burner for a little bit but you you know you can't do that you can't be out here loving the world and not loving yourself that's not cool you know that's not fair um because if you don't love you who's going to love you i mean your family of course but for the most part nobody can love you the way you love you and i um we talked about that yesterday a little bit and just understand that the average person has so many negative thoughts on a daily um, some more than others. It just depends on the experiences that we've been through. But understand that we, we're going to have several negative thoughts towards ourselves and towards others. You know, that's just a natural thing. But love is one of the first aspects of life that we learn since we're born. You know, we come into the world being loved by our parents or your guardian or whoever took care of you growing up. They showed you, they instilled love within you. So it's not that you don't have it. It's just like I said, it can get overshadowed by hardship, adversity, you know, pain, rejection, whatever that makes you feel negative, insecurity. It can be overshadowed by these things, but it's there, you know, because it's your core. It's it's your humanity. It's a part of who you are as a as a being. I'm getting blown now. Blown now. I'm in my soul now. You know, so everyone is capable of love. Everyone is capable of showing love to others and to themselves. You know, it's just a choice, though. Um, so understand that, like I said, that that is instilled in you since you're, you're you know, a child. Um, and your family, they, they give you different principles to work with, hopefully. And if not, you still build that some kind of way through experiences. Um, some people, you know, it takes them a little bit longer to figure out what's right and what's wrong for them. And that's OK. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but just understand that through a series of unfortunate events, you know, love can can be shut down in a lot of ways. We can shut ourselves down and we can get closed off because of, of what we experienced. And that's why a lot of people find it hard to love themselves because of what they've been through, like I said. 
and that that's that's a part of the process but I know it's easier said than done to not shut down because that's one of the first things we do as a defense mechanism. It's a way to protect ourselves. We just close ourselves off, even from ourselves. You know, we, we don't resonate with love the way we used to, or we don't look at ourselves with the same sparkle in our eyes that we have. We don't have that same sparkle. You know what I mean? That fire from within is not there. And that that's okay. It's a temporary phase. It's called the phase. You know, we all go through those different phases or stages in life where we just don't understand ourselves anymore. Or we just don't know who we're looking at, frankly, because you know why you're building a new being, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out what old methods or what old forms of you you can take into the future with you. And that's why that person is, is unrecognizable. And it's just because that person is unfamiliar right now that you find it hard to love the new version. But the more you get to know that new version, the more you'll love it, you know. But you have to give that new version of you a chance in order to love it. You know, awaken your love again. And I know this all sounds so cliche, but sometimes you have to be cliche with yourself because the cliches are factual. Like, the more we want to get around that, we have to understand that a lot of these cliche phrases that we were taught growing up in school or through our family, friends, whatever the case may be, they are factual. They are very true. They hold the test of time. Like, self-love is the best love. That may sound cliche to a lot of people, but I bet it's the truth, you know, in so many ways because that that's the only way to love. That's the only way to show love to others is to have it from within. If you look at it this way, how can you show something that you don't know anything about? You know, how can you exude something that you don't have? So if you love people, how do you not love yourself? You know, it doesn't make any sense because if you really claim that, that you know what love is and you know how loving people should be or feel or sound or whatever the case may be, how is it that you don't showcase that from within? You know, so it, it's like we're asking to be loved, but we don't give it to ourselves from the start, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, or some people skip steps, you know, they try to go from instead of giving love to themselves, they want it from other people first. No, no, no. That's not that's not how you start. You start from you first and then it trickles down to the world. Then you go to the extension of the world. But you have to find that within first. Everything is, is from within. All the answers are from within first. And then you can do like a comparison um, to what others may feel or do some research from outside sources once you have um, inner source uh, answers. Because understand there's such a thing as uh, inner size. You know how there's exercise, which means, you know, external, the outside. And then there's inner size, which means inner work, you know, inner drills, just like you do those outside drills with the world and you, you, you're you out and about and you're doing different things and making certain moves and all that research and all that, that's exercising. You have to learn how to inner size. Like I said, do the work from within, figure out answers from within, you know, have, have different um, steps that you go through with yourself and have um, a routine, you know, a set routine. Um, it, it, it really depends on, on the person to set that type of routine though. Um, I don't want to give you a specific routine to live by. I think that that should be a personal thing because I don't like to force anything on anyone. So I think whatever works for you, if you want to have a self-care day once a week, twice a week, the whole week, I don't know the whole month, whatever works for you, or just once out of the year, I don't know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But figure out what works for you individually because everything is individual. Um, and most of the time we have this idea of what we should be simply because of what we've been told. It's not necessarily from us that we find these things. It's from other people. And that's why you get confused because you're like, wait, what I thought love was or what I thought loving myself would be does not add up to what I've been told. And that's because everything that's been told to you is not set in stone. It doesn't apply to everyone. Like I said, because we're all different. We can't all live life the same way. We can't all feel the same way. We don't all have the same approach in life and nor should we want to. It's boring. 
you know um that's what makes life interesting the fact that we are so different and so unique because we all have something to add to the table so understand that nobody's better than the next you're not beneath anyone or anything like that it's just you have a different way of being you have different things that bring you peace versus what another person does yesterday we had talked about finding inner peace um and that is crucial with self-love when you love yourself you're gonna find inner peace that cultivates inner peace if anything so if you're craving that that's step one self-love is step one to get there um so understand that love can be so healing you know that's why you ever see those those really i mean genuinely happy couples who come from broken homes or broken relationships and they find each other and they're like oh my gosh like the love that this man or this woman gave to me and i know i say you shouldn't search externally but they also do the internal work too because they work together as a team to love themselves and love each other so it's a combination it's not just one way they do the inner work and outer work um and they they often say you know the way that this person loved me i had never been loved like that before but i, I also love myself and it's just it, it healed me in so many ways and that's the truth because it's all about encouragement love is about uplifting people it's about showing people the beauty of of what they they you know withhold um it's all about taking those those parts of them that they may not care for and bringing them to the surface and letting them know how truly amazing they are as they say you know there's someone for everyone for sure and nine chances out of ten the things that you don't like about yourself someone will love about you i'm getting blown now blown in my soul now you know so it's funny how life works and even if like I said, it shouldn't solely be based on that, though. Even if nobody loves anything about you, so what? You have to love everything about you, which I think is very hard to, to be like that because that's not going to ever happen. Somebody's always going to love something about you, okay? Like, there's so many different people. Like, everybody's unique. So you're going to find tons of people who love things about you. So don't even worry about that. But I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking, even if that were the case, you still love yourself. So it doesn't even matter, you know? Um, but yeah, just understand that love can be healing. Love can be a form of therapy to the soul. And that's why it, it's it's hard for us to function when we don't have that love. And I get it. But until you, you get that love that you want, no, in order, excuse me, let me rephrase that. In order to get that love that you want, let's stop thinking that way. You have to be love itself. You have to have that given to you by yourself you know first in order for anybody to be drawn to that because that is that is what attracts what you want anything that you want in life you have to attract it by feeling it from within first and then it comes after the fact it doesn't come before like i said searching for love outside cannot be the step uh, that you take in order to get love you have to do that for yourself and then the love that that is equal to your self-love is going to come. You know, the love that is compatible with the way you love yourself is going to come. And that's the love that you need, you know, and that that's what we have to realize. We, we, we think we have an idea, but we really don't because we haven't given ourselves that time to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with ourselves. Um, and we had talked about having a self-love language. Self-love languages are great. Like I said, that's the form of therapy for the soul. You know, whether it be through, I don't know, whatever different aspects you have to use. Maybe it's just one. Maybe it's three out of the five or whatever the case may be. But whatever works for you, you know, it's, it's okay. You don't have to be like everyone else. You don't have to do what everyone else tells you to do. Um, so understand that positive emotions, they strengthen the soul. Love strengthens the soul because love is a positive emotion. Um, and superficial means are not going to be a guarantee to the love and the connection that you crave within. Like I said, like worrying about how you look all the time or how you sound and how much money you have or things like that. That's not self-love. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't give you self-love. Like, yes, it's great to look good. You know, because you should take care of how you look. Because when you love yourself, you make sure you look your best. For sure. Definitely. We all should look great. Um, because that makes you feel good. But at the same time, 
it, it can't be all physicality. There's so much depth to a person. It's, it's physical, mental, spiritual, all of that. You know what I mean? It's, it's a combination. So we can't just simply be concerned with our, our outside shell and not the inner shell. You know what I mean? The inner shell comes before the outer shell because if you're not happy within or at peace within, it's it's not going to make you look attractive anyways because notice that when you get angry, you you scowl, you frown, you, you exude negative energy. So how is that going to give you the beauty that you're seeking anyways? You know, because your soul is not at rest. Your soul is unhappy. Your soul is unsettled. So even if you were trying to do that, it still wouldn't be successful because you have to start within in order for you to have genuine smiles and real laughter. You know what I mean? And that right there can uh, give you the outside beauty that you're looking for. When you do the inside work, the outside beauty will come naturally, you know, because like I said, it's like a cycle. They they work together. Um, so just try to stay away from superficial means, though. Um you know, and understand we have to cultivate our own image of self-love and learn to embrace the feeling um, and slow down. You know, we have to learn how to slow down and trust our, our gut instincts and, and be um, in your heart space rather than logic all the time when you're trying to do self-love. Um, be a reflection of the love that you crave, like I said before. Um, understand what that love feels like. And, and be proud of that. Take pride in who you are. You know, don't be ashamed of who you are. Feed yourself with the, the many wonders of what self-love offers, you know. That's why I said, like, we have to be fair with ourselves and really give to ourselves more than we give to the world. Because that's the only way that we're really going to be able to contribute and be at peace while we're here. Um, you know, and learn to let go of the feeling of being unworthy. There's no such thing as you being unworthy. You were deemed worthy since birth. You know, that's your God-given right. You're always worthy. You always will be. You always have been. You know, so it's been embedded in us to be overly critical towards ourselves, like I said, um, and towards that inner child. Understand that your inner child is very sensitive and your inner child cannot take all of that hatred or, or all of that, that self-loathing behavior. You know, your inner child has to be treated with delicacy and, and understood and and handled with care, you know. So handle your inner child with care. And the only way to do that is to love that child as much as you can. Um, just like the love that you have for life as a kid, that's the same type of energy you should put towards yourself. Um, you know, so don't live with regret or, or resentment towards yourself. You know, turn those emotions into love, respect, and and, and appreciation for yourself, overall appreciation, you know? Um, and these are some um, positive affirmations that you can practice. I'll give you some of these. I am worthy, I am strong, I am beautiful or handsome. I am smart, I am capable of achieving greatness. You know, these are, are things that cover the core principles of what we seek. It's not all based on looks. It's not all based on intellect. It's a combination of all of those things so that you cover the basis, you know? And stop comparing yourself to other people around you, you know? Stop being in competition with other people. Be, be better than the old version of you. You should be in competition with yourself, you know? Like I said, that old version... That old version of you is is something that you can't necessarily get rid of if it has a core, but um, you can definitely add it on to the new person. Um, but understand that comparing yourself is only going to do more harm than good. It's not healthy. It's not something that you should practice because anytime you practice something, you get into the habit of doing it. And once it becomes habitual, it becomes that much more difficult to pull away from it. It becomes that much more difficult to learn how to love yourself. Think of it that way. When you've hated yourself for so long or you've, you've had a strong dislike towards yourself or anything negative towards yourself for so long understand that you have then breeded a pattern a habit you know and we all know that habits are hard to break that doesn't mean that they are unbreakable but it's very difficult to break a habit especially depending on the time frame in which that habit was breeded and how long it's been going on I've 
I'm getting blown now. Blown.